Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Cleviscope as a frequency response analyzer looking at the performance of a switched mode flyback converter module. Let's start by looking at all the parts. Here is the TI EVM TPS55340. It's a flyback voltage converter, 12 volts in, 5 volts out, capable of handling 2.5 amps. As you can see, it has a 2 ohm load, which is the 2.5 amps. The signal is applied between TP6 and TP2 across R3. R3 was changed from 0 ohms to 50 ohms. We are probing both sides of TP2 and TP6 using our probes. We use a video isolation transformer with a bandwidth of 20 Hz to 5 MHz to isolate the signal coming from the signal generator going across the resistor in the TIEVM that stimulates the feedback path and therefore allows us to evaluate the transfer function. We are using scope probes with a bandwidth of about 16 MHz. As you can see the ground clips are in place. This works fine provided the frequency of interest is low. At higher frequencies, it would probably be better to directly wire in some coaxial cable. The probes connect to the channel A and B inputs on the cleviscope. The signal generator is connected to the isolating transformer using a 20 dB attenuator. This means that the preset 0.5 volts peak to peak coming out of the signal generator is converted to 50 millivolts peak to peak into the transformer. Right, we've seen how the hardware goes together, so let's look at the Cleviscope app and how it's set up to do frequency response analysis. First off, we need to set up the control panel. We want to plot gain phase, so we choose the settings spectrum dialog and set the transform type to gain phase. Use, we use a Henning window because it has a narrow lobe width with good accuracy. We want to plot in degrees and unwrap phase so that the phase display is continuous. Next, we choose the averaging dialog to set the weighting mode to peak which means we accumulate successive peak values to one plot. Check the interpolation. This means that the plot interpolates from one point to the next, and we need fewer signal generator frequency points, which makes acquisition faster. Now we need maximum resolution, so we choose acquisition settings. And we make sure that the ADC is running 14-bit and we turn on the moving average filter with a 1.28 microsecond time constant. This filters switching noise but preserves lower frequency signal information such as phase and amplitude. We are probing points on the TI EVM with significant DC but we only want the AC values so we turn on AC coupling. We want to enable the moving average filter, so we turn the filters menu filters on for both channels. We're using peak averaging, so we turn on averaging. Other settings are as you can see. Okay, I'll just start capturing now by clicking auto. Now onto the scope display. This is used to set the capture specification. The time width needs to be large enough to resolve the minimum frequency well. We'll go for about 20 Hz as the minimum frequency, and so we need to resolve to about a quarter of this, say around 5 Hz. This means we need a scope graph duration of 200 milliseconds. I'll just set it to that now. There we are, minus 100 to plus 100, which is 200 milliseconds. All the information in the capture is used, so longer capture times give us better coherence between the measured stimulation and the feedback signals. 
If you are having problems getting good coherence values, increase the capture duration. We'll talk about this a bit later on. The 200 milliseconds should work just fine. The amplitude range needs to be sufficient to capture the entire switching waveform. Because of the higher resolution of the scope, you don't need to fuss too much here. Just go for something with a bit of headroom. We'll be stimulating with about 25 millivolts peak to peak, but we not, might need to boost that up to about 20 times by about 20 times at low frequencies. So we'll go for a range which safely covers the 500 millivolts peak to peak. We'll use plus or minus 0.4 volts. Okay, now onto the spectrum display. Here we want to set the frequency range as we need. Let's go for 20 hertz, 200 kilohertz. We want a log display. So we click on the lin F button to change it to log. Then we overtype the range on the x axis to get the frequency range we want 20 hertz and 200 kilohertz. I have already set the gain and phase ranges so that the zero line buttons so the zero values coincide. You can adjust this data if required. The frequency span and resolution controls give you their variable values. We'll go for a span about double the range we want to capture to avoid aliasing and as fine a resolution as we can get given the scope capture duration. We'll choose 500 kilohertz and 7.63 hertz. Finally, we want to set up the signal generator. We want to use the same frequency step as the spectrum resolution, so we click Auto Step to transfer the frequency resolution to the base frequency value and to the step resolution. We want a frequency range of 200 kHz. Let's go for 20 dBs, 20 steps per decade. To give us a reasonable graph. We want a log sweep to match the log graph. A sweep time of two seconds is good. We want a sweep synchronous. This means that the signal generator is adjusted in between captures and we get maximum accuracy because there is no frequency smearing as the frequency changes. We choose sweep up once. To get a plot once we click start sweep. Finally we set the sweep amplitude to adaptive. This is a special FRA mode in which the application measures the coherence between the stimulus and feedback signals. We display the signal, the coherence, as the FRA figure of merit up here. Good values go from 0.2 to 10. If a value is below 0.2, we need to boost the stimulus signal until we get a good form. This is done automatically when you select the adaptive sweep amplitude. If the form is good, the amplitude is set to the value you set up on the amplitude slider. In this case, we'd like to use a standard value of about 25 millivolts peak to peak. As you saw, we have a 20 dB or one tenth divider on the output of the signal generator and we have a 50 ohm load on the TI EVM. The signal generator output impedance is 50 ohms, so the 50 ohm load halves the amplitude. In total, we divide the signal by 20. This means we need about 500 millivolts peak to peak output signal. So let's set the slider to that. The adaptive boost works at up to about 9 volts peak to peak which is effectively an 18 times boost if needed. Looking at the signal information, you can see that the stimulus is 26 millivolts peak to peak. That will do just fine. OK, now I'll turn on the EVM. You can see the switching waveforms here now. Now we can click Start Sweep to start capturing the gain phase plot.
you can see the boosting going on as required. This is because the correlation between the stimulus and the feedback signals is quite low as we start up in the 20 hertz to 1 kilohertz range because of the very high loop gain in the switch mode power controller. The form is indicated here. You can see the graph is complete. To see the zero gain and zero degree points, click the FR0DB button. Just as a side note, the FR-3dB button is used to measure filter responses. As you can see, the markers are now located at the 0 dB and 0 degrees points. And the marker values up here show the phase at the 0 degree gain, sorry, at the 0 dB gain, and the gain at the 0 degree phase points. The slope is minus 22 dB per decade. Finally, we can add an annotation to describe what this graph is displaying. and we can locate the annotation as necessary. It is common to document as you go, and Cleberscope provides a facility for doing this. Select the graph you want, and go Control c which is copy. Pull in the document that you want to write into, um, using this word one, and Control v to paste. Now you can carry on describing in your report what you found. As you can see, Cleverscope offers a very useful frequency response analysis mode that gives good results even in the presence of large amounts of external noise. Here is the gain phase plot included in the TI EVM description document. As you can see, it is very similar to the gain phase reported by Cleverscope. So, we hope you'll find our FRA analyzer really useful. Thanks for watching.